to consumers, they're supper, boiled, mashed, baked. To farmers, they're called table stock, and they're the bread and butter of PEI's potato industry. Potatoes were first grown here in the late 1700s. Settlers survived for decades basically on potatoes and cod. And potatoes grew well here, the sandier soils, predictable rain. PEI quickly became the source for potatoes in the Maritimes and the New England states. Potatoes are now the most widely grown vegetable in the world. There have been a lot of changes, but PEI remains Canada's largest potato producing province. We had good potato men on PEI. We had like a lot of good potato men that, that knew their business and, and uh, went out and got the markets for us. Like. We got a fair price uh, some years, some years we didn't. Uh, a lot of stuff went on boats, you know, back then. Uh, Russell Chang loaded, you know, dozens of boats out of Surrey. Uh, we, we, we hauled potatoes to, uh, to Summerside, a lot of potatoes to Summerside that went on boats. And, uh, and of course it was done the hard way. The 110 pound bags were packed in by hand in your arms. Well, back in the earlier years, we, when we grew only 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 acres, we sold uh, just to the local dealers, who would, who would, whoever they would be that were around. And to some extent, that, that still happens, only it's different now. Dealers were the link between potato growers and big city brokers and wholesalers. Back through the 1960s, 70s and 80s, PEI was the top dog in fresh markets, with enough supply to ship from fall to the following summer. And the industry had one more distinction back then. It was known for quality. Well, I think if you want to keep your market, it's the big thing. If, if you're not putting out um, a good quality product, then you're not, you're not going to sell it. Joan Dawson's late husband Gordon was a stickler for quality. After the federal inspection system was cut back, Gordon helped establish an inspection station just before the Confederation Bridge to keep PEI standards high. He was on his deathbed and David came in, my son David came in and told him that they were going to erect that uh, facility, that inspection facility in Borden. But he, I don't know if he took it in or not, but we, we did know before he died, and we did tell him. But, um, and you hope that he knew? We hope that he knew, yes. Because he, was, he, he thought that's where it should be, and he worked hard to get it there. And for decades, when the opportunity to sell to higher-valued seed potato markets in North America or offshore came along, Many had the quality to take advantage of those sales, too. We had an inspector come to us and he says, uh, Leonard and Lauren, he says, you people should be grown seed. You're, 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 you're wasting money on your smalls. You're, uh, the seed in industry was very important to our, our livelihood because it, uh, seed, in, in those days, you get as high as 22 cents a pound for seed, anywhere from, we'll say, 11 cents to 22, according to the market. And, you know, you could pay some bills. Perhaps more opportunities to bounce into different markets then than perhaps there is now. It's become a little more specialized now. You're either one or the other to a certain extent. If you don't have quality today, you, you don't stay in the marketplace very long. And I think PEI has done a reasonably good job on maintaining quality. Other areas have upped their quality as well because they had to compete with the better quality that was in the marketplace. And Morley Wood was part of a consortium of other growers that created mid Isle Farms, a modern packing operation, to meet the higher demands in the marketplace. Uh, certainly it has proven to be rather successful. Uh, there is challenges every year in accessing the right kind of product, and that, that will go on. <laughs> That's not going to get a whole lot better. And how have you seen the marketplace change? You, you've certainly seen consolidation amongst wholesalers and yeah. brokers and so on. How, how, what's that meant to the industry here? 
It has taken some of the, the personal feeling or the personal togetherness for me talking to the, to the buyer, I'm probably just going to be talking to a computer or, or talking to a broker in between. It's taken some of that, that touch away from it. Uh, the one thing that keeps anybody who is in any marketplace, it don't matter which one, is if they've got the right quality that the marketplace wants, whether it's seed or whether it's table potatoes or whether it's processing product, you will generally get along very good. Along with a more competitive marketplace, PEI growers face higher costs to grow the crop and especially for transportation to deliver to the big urban centers in central Canada and the U.S. East Coast. I mean, some of the guys there, all the more credit to them, are we're only 50 or 100 miles from the marketplace. We're 1,000 miles from the marketplace. So. Because it, you get a sense these days that price is really all that matters. All that matters, yeah. And everybody's trying to beat you down. And today it, it costs a lot, as you know. Uh, Fertilizer goes up, the chemicals go up, uh, but the farmers, th their prices don't go up. And you wonder how long you can continue that. And that's what's happening today, isn't it, on Prince Edward Island? We're losing our farmers. If we look back into the early 70s, I remember some machinery was bought and uh, a trailer, three trailer loads of potatoes bought a 125 horsepower tractor. That was uh, right, that, that, there was some buying power then. Today, I don't know what price we'd have to have for, for that to happen. So the buying power has certainly shrunk. The only thing that's probably keeping us going is size has increased and there's efficiencies to a certain point. You can go, you can swell up in size and efficient, efficiencies can start going the other way. But there is a size, and everybody will have to choose what size that is for them, where efficient economies of scale seem to work. But to get the buying power of back in them years, that's not going to happen. It's gone. The other challenge for the industry is farm labor. The current workforce is aging, and well-paying jobs in the Alberta oil fields is an attractive option for many younger islanders. But in those days, We'd start packing, we'd work all winter uh, with a crew. Packing pit is 50s, and for, it'd be 50s for Newfoundland, it'd be seed for, for the boats, it'd be a table for the boats, and you know, work all winter with eight or 10 men. Like, and then the men got, you know, a help got hard to get, so, so we had to look at something else and we looked at processing. We have been very, very fortunate. We have three employees, but they're getting to the age that it's time for them to retire, too. And it'd be hard to replace. I don't know how we would replace them. And when they go, I think we got to go. <laughs> I hate to say that. But I mean, if, if my grandson was to come in and try and take over, these guys that we've had with us for years are going to be gone because they're the same age as, as my, my boys. So where do you get help? One of the most positive developments in the last few years is the creation of an industry-led group called United. It's making sure that growers from both the U.S. and Canada are talking to each other and trying to keep production levels close to demand. Overproduction can quickly lead to very poor prices. United has had the capacity to meet with grower groups in, other, in, in the U.S. as well and back and forth, other parts of Canada, all across the U.S. That in itself has created a better level of understanding of how the potato industry in both countries work. And ironically, the U.S. exports more potatoes to Canada than it does anywhere else. Processing industry in Canada and the United States are, are intertwined I mean, companies have plants both sides of the border. It's, it's almost one. It's almost one. So there's been a, a tremendous level of understanding developed, which wasn't developed by government.
people, it was developed by the uh, industry groups, which were the growers themselves. And these growers face many challenges besides keeping production in line with demand. New environmental regulations, climate change, consumer demand for new varieties and stiff competition in the marketplace. There's, a le there's less willingness today for people to work like my grandfather and my father did and to some extent myself, but I wasn't willing to work as hard as they did. I didn't have to because machinery became part of the deal at that point in time. But what's happening now with the younger generations, I think a lot of them would like to farm, but they will have to be paid or they won't farm. It's as simple as that. They have education, they have other choices. They have, they have, other, they have other choices. I think in a lot of cases their choice would be this. But some of them may take a look and say, well, why would, why would I do that? I hope that they're able to get comfortable because that's what has to happen to maintain the industry at large. I guess the best memory I'd have is uh, the fact that uh, the wife and I were able to make a, a, a modest living. We're not rich, but I hope we're not going to starve to death before we die. Uh, you're out in the fresh air, you're uh, working God's land, and uh, it's a good life. It's not an easy life, that's for sure. There's a lot of risks, There's, there was a pile of hard work, and uh, the independence, you know, you're independent. There's nobody saying to you, well look, you, you, you've got to be here at 8 o'clock, you've got to punch that time clock. <laughs> If you get up late and you don't get it done, there's nobody's fault on your own. <laughs> Today's growers do face bigger risks financially and from the weather than earlier generations, so their independence will be challenged. But the industry's long history, the skills and experience of potato growers will maintain its role as the driver of PEI's economy.